Your main man returns. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this guy's joining me for the video. I'm not joining you. Uh, he said you're not going to join me. We're going to talk about the devil in the details. And this is really the greatest piece of RPG advice I can give any game master, new, old, whether you've been on it 40,000 years, baby. This is just what you need to slobber knock your players right in the mind's eye of the hippocampus, if you understand what I'm saying. So you really want to get in there and dig into the minutiae as you're describing. Flavor it up. Get in there and describe the cracks in the mortar describe the creeping ivy coming up or even when it's where it's been pulled out describe the weeds and then you have to be massively overgrown but just 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 a little bit kind of get in there and talk about the different species of flora and fauna that you that you're going to see describe them by name show pictures to your players engage all their five senses so when you're talking about that right if they're in a place with a lot of cats, talk about the allergic reaction that they're having to the, the cat dander, to the fur, how, how that might be affecting just single one of the players out and start talking about that. And you could really help engage that. It will help draw them in. What you want to get is people playing inside of their heads. That is the best fun. And we're going to talk a lot about the best fun. Because monkey asses will like to explain, oh, that's you're trying to say that's not the best. Well, it is. My, my son, if you hear that in the background, that's him moving around, wants to come up here, have a front row seat. You need to buy a ticket price, baby, to have a front row seat to this show. This is your main man, Jabroni. What? How dare you? Go get him. We'll see about that. Uh, all right. So, all right, my son's here distracting me as I'm trying to, I'm making movies, y'all. So, get in there and describe things like that. The allergic reaction to the pollen in the spring. Talk about the honeybees moving around. Maybe one of the players, particularly if they're not wearing shoes or something, gets stung by a honeybee. And you can kind of work that for a few minutes. And you can engage that extra level of detail. And it's not anything big. It's not anything that's causing a big issue. Maybe you get one point of damage or something of that nature. But not even the mechanical interface. The interface with the world really starts to add to the detail. And it makes your game feel special to stand out, to be more. Don't sit there and be lazy and be a monkey's ass. Sit there and be a real champion and understand exactly what's going on. Engage them in the world. Talk about how the wind feels tickling against their throat. Talk about the smell of the sediment of the, of the broken rock from the nearby quarry that's carried on the wind or the salt in the air. Or talk about the humidity in the air, the heat, the cold the rain, the mistiness, engage the temperatures, make them different, engage the weather and make that different. Talk about the cycles of the moon, talk about the cloud cover ahead, talk about the darkness. That gets really dark in a fantasy world. You can see the stars, you can see those trees, and particularly if you are a human, when those torches go out, it's really dark. But even in torchlight, it is extremely dark. Take a torch out in the woods and take a look around. Take a flashlight out in the woods and take a look around. It is not like it's daylight, and you got to really impress that upon your players. That's the devil in the details. You understand what I'm saying? Go into the bird calls. You can play a little track. There's tons of them on YouTube alone. Play a track of bird calls. Get specific birds, and you can give that little bit of information to your druid or to your ranger, to the person that has animal lore, right? Knowledge and nature. Make them make a role, right? And all of a sudden, you've engaged that, and it makes more, more of a sense. Oh, yeah, this is... You, you, you hear the calls of the robins, you hear the calls of the chickadees, or the sparrows, or blue jays, or, or the, being watched by crows, right? And those sort of small details make the skills seem more important, more significant. You're engaging, you're letting them get some value out of that. If you give them experience off of skills, which I do, well, it lets them get a little bit of experience there, but makes them feel like they have selected something that has more value. And you're bound to have somebody in your group that's a ranger, that's a druid, that's a barbarian, that has knowledge uh nature that has animal lore that has a forester type of skill or secondary skill proficiency what have you and you want to make sure that you're you know you're putting value in that it helps to make their character selection feel better um talk about the feel uh of the rain you know as it's coming in you can engage the weather sense skills you can uh the, the smell of it you know if they're playing a humanoid my son of my game is playing a knoll and his character can, his, has a great sense of smell as he is, you know, part hyena, essentially. And you can give those sort of details to someone that has like a scent ability. 
or is somehow uh, less human than a human, if you will. Talk about the smell of cooking food as you're moving through the bazaar or down the street or the high that's on the window. And you can start engaging that temptation that the person has as they start putting themselves more in a character, more in a player, right? Maybe he's not even evil. He's like, damn, the pie looks gooder than a bug. And you just snatch it right off a window and they start eating that pie. And then a little bit of drama can ensue. It doesn't have to be something huge. It could be. It doesn't have to be, you know, as that becomes a, a problem as he grabs the boysenberry pie, the cherry pie, the apple pie. In the frown realms itself. So you want to bring those sort of details in and let that linger. You know, the heat or, or the coolness, the smell of that food-rich steam trickling down the alleyway, mixing with the smells of horse shit and, and hiss and drunkenness and vomit and the smell of ass that is going to be in, in the streets and the hideous stink of rotting mud and old decaying food. You re-gauge those sort of things. That's really important. Talk about the cockroaches, the fleas, the bed bugs, the lice. A lot of times people don't bring anything like that into a game. They'll make it all glamorous. Man, if you make that game dark, down, dirty, and gritty, map, trust me, the players will really engage that way. They'll be feeling more about it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The tavern does not have clean water, right? That water out the well might be nasty as hell by our modern standards, but that character in the world may think absolutely nothing of it. So that can ingrain the player into thinking more that this is not just here. It's not just now. The people that talk about the body odor and the stink, because people did not have that cleanliness standard. You know, talk about the layers of makeup and perfumes that are put on to attempt to mask those sort of things can really help to engage those extra senses. And you want to keep doing that, right? Um, you can go in really easy. It doesn't It doesn't take someone who has a great degree of knowledge of the animal kingdom to do an extra five minutes of work and talk about this beetle species, that beetle species, this type of moth, this type of butterfly, and show them pictures. Say, okay, you see these things. These things are here. These things are something that you are seeing in the area or the sound of a babbling brook or a raging storm, um, the, the, the sea foam throth uh, hitting the shores, and you can play tracks off YouTube for this example, real easy, and you can look all that type of stuff up. A howling um, wind through the trees, the uh, raucous sounds of a tavern, all that sort of background ambiance really can help drag the player because you want them to be playing inside of their head. Not out here, not with toys. You take those miniatures and throw them in the garbage. Take those battle mats and hit, and hit people like Wizards of the Coast over the head with them. That's right, this time of year, just beat them. Just if you find people for working Wizards of the Coast, beat them with miniatures, beat them with battle mats. I've seen the price of these things. I've seen these scallywags of scoundrels and mental simpletons attempting to extract from you uh, your RPG money. And I say bunk them all and give them exactly what they need for their very tactics itself and have absolutely no respect for that style of game. The style of game that says each and everything is just as good as everything else. Oh, and by the way, buy, 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 spend, spend, spend. And don't don't engage the imagination. Don't engage that. Don't have that great sort of game experience that you can have. Don't have those games that last. Don't have those games where players tell stories about 30, 40, 50 years later. That's not what we're trying to have. We're trying to have some condition cards. You understand? We're trying to have you buy extra sets of, of, of dice and rubber bands and certainly miniatures, 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 because we can keep selling them to you. And a piece of plastic that big at $40 is a huge win on the day. Uh, for the people who are attempting to ruin our hobby. Absolutely. Um, so that's really what you what you what you want to do just as a game master stop and think and think about what the world looks like at any given moment. Right? Engage the time, engage the feel, engage the season, engage the weather. Talk about the various insects moving around, the butterflies flitting, the beetles scurrying underfoot. Talk about as they've slain the orc, that smell of shit that's permeating up through because you've severed uh, his intestines, right? You All the blood and gushing on the ground. One of the worst things you can have is you have the players there at the night and they get jumped by monsters and they just go right back to sleep in the same spot after the fight's over. Oh, we got to get our sleep. Oh, we got to get our spells. But if you start to really describe what's exactly happening, how horrible it is, the, the, the smell of piss and shit as the dead monster continues to, to defecate it. And all the blood and the smell of musk uh, and the, the, the horrible body stink of the unwashedness of orcish hordes. 
once you start to really engage that, the players are going to engage right back at you, and they're going to sell. And once you get them selling, and then you're selling back for them, you start going to an additional place of additional uh, mental creativity and wonderment. And that's absolutely uh, just what you want to be doing.